Hi everybody, I'm Peter Rogers, MD. We're gonna be talking about how to optimize your body weight. Okay, we're gonna loosely go from uh, one of the medical charts here in this book, uh, A Tale of Two Toes and a Hot Tub, this book I wrote a while ago. All right, the first thing for optimizing your body weight is try to eat 100% plant-based diet. And the reason I'll say that is, people say, oh, I'm confused, I don't know what to eat, I don't know what to do. Well, well here's what I would tell you. Open your eyes, okay? Look at epidemiology. You look at a country, like, let's say you go to China before 1970, when people ate a predominantly rice diet. They're all skinny, okay? You can't find a fat person. So if you're eating 80% of your calories from rice, you're probably gonna be skinny. And by the way, that's a starch, okay? It's a high carbohydrate diet. When you eat 100% plant-based, like a low-fat, 100% plant-based, you're probably going to end up at 80-10-10. That means 80% carbohydrates, 10% protein, and 10% fat, which is perfect for a regular person. That's the best diet that there is. Okay, in addition, just look all around the world. Wherever you see a population of people that are pretty skinny, they're typically going to be eating a starch-based diet. Some of them are going to be eating a lot of fruits. You know, when you live in a warmer place near the equator, you got a lot more fruits all year round. Okay. Um, next thing, you want to eat a low-fat diet. So even if you're a vegan, and I basically see 100% plant food eaters as sort of like two main categories. There's the health vegans like myself. I'm, I only eat plants, 100% plant diet. And then there's the so-called philosophic vegans, don't be cruel animals, all that kind of stuff. All right, the health vegans are a lot healthier because they're eating to be healthy versus you can see a fat vegan if they're putting oil in their food, um, if they're eating a lot of fat uh, plant foods. Fat plant foods would be things like nuts and seeds, or of course the oils as we mentioned, like avocados. My recommendation is avoid all that stuff. All fats beyond the minimal amount that are in plants will impair blood flow. Trust me, I did a fellowship in vascular disease at Harvard. I know what I'm talking about. Fat is not good for blood flow, okay? We're gonna talk about that in more detail in other lectures, but that's a good thing for you to get through your head. I don't even believe in this good fats. I think that's like a Trojan horse that confuses people and gets them to eat fat and junk food, okay? So avoid fat, all right? Uh, well, low-fat plant-based diet is the main thing I was emphasizing there. Eat starches. And the point about a starch is, first of all, starches and high-fiber fruits, things like wild blueberries, they have a low caloric density, meaning that they will stretch your stomach with relatively few calories. And that creates an early satiety, satisfaction of hunger. Your intestinal tract then has to peel the fiber off before the glucose is absorbed into your blood. And that creates almost the effect of a slow release energy pill. You maintain this nice normal blood glucose for a prolonged amount of time and you feel good. All right, your hunger is satisfied. You can just do whatever you wanna do. Um, probably the best thing for satisfying hunger with a few calories are beans. Beans have tons of fiber. They're considered a starch, actually, but the thing about beans is that they got so much fiber, and probably a lentil, the small bean with more surface area relative to central contents is one of the best. I experiment with all these different diets, because often I'll have to do a bunch of procedures in the middle of the day, and I'm not gonna get to eat lunch. So I experimented with what can I eat for breakfast and be able to skip lunch and still feel really good. And the best food is beans. Some people have referred to that as the second meal effect of beans, the after effect of beans but they're fantastic for that. And there's a little bit of a joke. If you, anybody is trained in medicine is gonna probably have read a book called Dale Dubin's Rapid Interpretation of EKGs. And Dale Dubin, he's a clever writer. He said, if man is the center of the universe and the heart is the center of man and the sinoatrial node, the intrinsic pacemaker is the center of the heart then the sinoatrial node is the center of the universe, okay? And my joke of that is, well, if beans are the center of the nutrition universe in terms of being the best start to satisfy hunger and the smallest diameter bean is the one that has the most uh, fiber and the delayed meal effect, and that's the center of the nutritional universe, okay? So if you wanna skip lunch, that I actually try to always eat lunch, but on a busy day, sometimes I have to skip lunch, and beans are the secret for doing that. So they'll make you skinnier. That same old concept of the way to be skinny is to satisfy your hunger with the fewest number of calories. You have to satisfy your hunger or you just end up binge eating, okay? Um, the next thing is avoid meat. Meat's got a lot of saturated fat. If you look at meat, you know, typical numbers for meat would be like 50% protein, 50% fat. You don't want that. There's no carbohydrate in meat except for milk, which has the lactose, milk sugar. High amounts of fat, they make you fat. Your body wants to store fat. Fat is how our body stores energy for long term. Um, that's because fat's dehydrated, whereas uh, glycogen, for example, stored in water. But the point I'm gonna make for you is you wanna avoid meat because it's high fat content in particular uh, tends to make people get fat. You wanna avoid all oils. Oils are extremely high uh, in calories per their size. You can't stretch your stomach without putting thousands and thousands of calories of oils in there. 
and you know, a moment on your hips forever on your lips. Oils make you fat. Avoid them. I, I eat no oils. If I see oils in a food, I will not eat it. They're very atherogenic. They also predispose to leaky gut. Um, so forget about oils. Uh, next thing is, and I mean all oils, omega-6s, omega-3s, any of the PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids, vegetable oils, all of them. The next thing is watch out for estrogenics. I think estrogenics are a common way that people are becoming fat. Most people aren't even aware of them. When I say estrogenic, I mean an estrogenic type chemical. We'll go into this in much more detail in a different lecture, but the gist of it is a typical uh, estrogen hormone, um, it's going to have a benzene ring in the corner, and then you're going to have the rest of the steroid molecule. Can't really put it all here, but the point is this is called a phenol group, the hydroxyl group coming off the benzene ring, and that activates the estrogen receptor. So any chemical that's got that in there will probably activate your estrogen receptor. And your skin is designed to keep out water. Theoretically, we evolved from a saltwater fish or creature or something, theoretically, okay? And you don't get waterlogged if you swim in the ocean, but like dissolves like in chemistry. So when you put this, which is a lipid, a hydrophobic molecule, other than the little hydroxyl group, it's going to go right through your skin, transdermally absorbed. And that's what's all about. Like women have to be careful about using an aluminum deodorant with parabenzoic acid preservatives because it's transdermally absorbed, especially if she shaves first, increases the risk of breast cancer, which is increasing in frequency in the upper outer quadrant. And what I'm trying to say is high levels of estrogen are like a woman being pregnant, okay? It activates the PPAR gamma switch in the hypothalamus like at the arcuate nucleus, the hunger center, and it tells the body it's pregnant, okay? Start storing weight, start gaining weight, save it for the baby, okay? So people are making themselves fat without even realizing it. Their hormones are being reprogrammed to make themselves fat. So you want to get in the habit of learning about estrogenics and avoiding them. And so the first one, uh, we talked about it. It's in a lot of foods. We'll talk about this more in some other lecture, but there's lots of estrogenic chemicals in detergents, in all these cosmetic products. The reason is these are great preservatives. They're cheap. They've got an incredible shelf life because of the aromatic benzene ring. They're antimicrobial, so mold doesn't grow in the product, the cosmetic or the deodorant. And that's why they're never going to go away. You just have to learn to avoid them. So anyways, those are things you can do to optimize your body weight. And then you say, well, what's the proof of all this? Well, look at all the populations that eat this way and live this way. They're all skinny. They got average BMIs, body mass indices of around 22, okay? Average Americans fat, BMIs around 30, okay? That's it.